We are in a series talking about the will of God and how it's always unfolding in our lives. It's sometimes difficult to see. From where we sit in the present, it can be confusing, it can feel dark. But I've made the argument that the most common prayer is somehow connected to this question of what is your will, God, for my life? It's certainly the most common question I get as a pastor. Hey, what's God's will for my life? It's not always worded that way. Sometimes it's around a decision or around a relationship or around an uncertain future. But we wanna know, God, what do you want for me? What's your will for my life? I, I think when we ask that question, we're typically looking for one of three things. A formula, a feeling, or what I would call a fortune teller. A fortune teller is... Um, somebody that you pay to tell you the future and only include the good stuff. Like that's, that's what you want from a fortune teller. You want somebody to just take away the bad stuff and let you know that it's gonna be okay and sometimes that's what we're looking for from God. We're in the dark and we just want to know where we're going and where we're gonna end up. Let me illustrate it this way. If we could just bring the house lights down, make it dark in here. We pray and we ask God for his will and what he seems to typically do is give us um, a flashlight approach. A flashlight allows you to see the next step or maybe the next couple steps in front of you, but that's about it. Like you can't really see where you're going. You don't know where you're supposed to turn. Certainly don't know where you're gonna end up. You can just take the next step. It, this is often how God's will works in scripture. Look at Joseph's great grandfather, Abraham. God says to Abraham, I want you to leave your home and I want you to go. Yeah, okay, where are we going? Now nah, I'll tell you along the way. Just pack things up, tell your wife you're moving, but I'm not gonna tell you where you're moving yet. And Abraham is commended for his faith, and we're told without faith it's impossible to please God. And so the will of God is often like this flashlight. It lets us take one step at a time, but it requires, it requires faith. I tell my kids, the sooner you can embrace the adventure of God's will, the better. Like if you just accepts the fact that he knows what you don't, he can see what you can't, and you can trust him to just lead you in the next step. One thing will lead to another. That's how God's will unfolds. We get a flashlight. What we typically want is more of a, one of these. This is a, a floodlight. That's, that's what we're going for. When we pray for God's will, we, we want to see everything. We want to know where we're going. We want to know that it's going to be okay. We want to be sure of where we're going to end up. And without a floodlight, we start to feel pretty anxious or often feel overwhelmed because we look around and we look ahead and there's so much uncertainty. And so when we pray for God's will, this is what we're often praying for, is God, tell me what's going to happen. Let me know everything's going to work out the way I want it to. It's going to work out okay. And bring the lights back up. But... I think a fortune teller is sometimes what we're looking for, or sometimes it's a formula where we enter in the appropriate data and God works like this uh, GPS system and he tells you, here's where you're going. Here's how long you're gonna be here and then you're gonna turn right and if a detour is coming, I'll let you know, don't you worry about it. And, and so we, we give God our destination and we just want him to give us directions. That's how we sometimes think of God's will. Or sometimes what we want is a feeling. When we're praying for God's will and we're trying to discern what that might be, we want it to match up with a feeling. How do you know it's God's will? Well, I feel, be careful whenever you answer it that way. There's something wrong if it just turns out that God's will always seems to align with your feelings of comfort, convenience, and happiness. Like, that's not how it works in scripture. It's not always how it works. God's will doesn't always just uh, match up with what we want. In fact, it oftentimes doesn't. And so how do we know the will of God in our lives? We've been studying Joseph in the Old Testament to get a better understanding of how we can see how we can lean into the unfolding will of God in our lives. Joseph, as we're gonna see here in the next few minutes, needed to experience some deliverance so that he could know the will of God for his present and his future. He needed to experience some deliverance so he could let go of some things from the past that were holding him back. And I don't think Joseph is the only one. I think there are some people listening to this 
who, who need to be delivered because you are letting some guilt or shame, you are letting some bitterness and anger from the past hold you back and keep you from moving forward. You're, you're letting something that happened to you get in the way of what God wants to do for you and, and you need some deliverance in your life. I, I think that God wants to accomplish that before you leave here today. I believe that that's possible through Jesus. I think it's his will for you to be delivered from some things in your past. And if you came in carrying some bitterness and anger and you've got a story to attach to it, a story of hurt, rejection, betrayal, abuse, resentment, there's deliverance for you in the name of Jesus before you leave here.